Simon, where are you? Dad's been asking for you all day. The doctor said his condition's getting worse. He'll manage to recover. It's not like this is his first heart attack. I promised Ella I wouldn't miss her birthday party. Seriously? Today could be his last day and you'd still rather party? No need to get preachy, Penelope. I am not going to put my life on hold in order to spend hours idling at the hospital. Father's always been rational about things like this. I'm sure he'll understand. He was asking for you this morning, remember? He said he wanted to speak with you one last time. One last time? Stop over dramatizing everything. If you think you can guilt trip me into coming, you're sorely mistaken. I'm just repeating what he said. Well, then he's just as overdramatic as you are. I'd say like father, like daughter, but that doesn't quite work with your situation, does it? Do you have to bring that up every time you get frustrated with me? What else am I supposed to do? You're acting all high and mighty like you actually cared about him. He's my biological father. If he was in any danger, I'd be the first one to run to his aid. His life is in danger. Did you not read what his doctor said? I'm driving to Ella's party. If he starts dying, get me on a video call and I'll say my goodbyes. I can't believe you're so heartless. I know the two of you haven't always seen eye to eye, but he's on his deathbed. Can't you be a bit more empathetic? You don't know anything. If there's anyone you should be calling heartless, it's your dear father. I don't understand what you're talking about. Of course you don't. The least you can do is hold your tongue before knowing the full story. Fine, then tell me. Tell me what did he ever do to you? He's been working hard all his life to make sure we had a carefree life growing up. Ever since mom passed away, he's been taking care of us all alone. Don't you dare bring her up. And he didn't bring us up alone. He had a nanny to help him out. You're ruining my mood. I can't show up at the party enraged. If Ella sees me like this, she'll never agree to go out with me. Trying to convince you is completely pointless, isn't it? Come if you want to, even if it's after midnight. He'll still appreciate the effort. Bye. Simon, why won't you answer the phone? Where are you? Dad's no longer with us. He passed away about an hour ago. What is this, a new scare tactic? I'm not falling for this. Come to the hospital and see for yourself. Before he passed, he asked me to tell you he was really sorry about what happened. This is not funny, Penelope. Stop making things up. Please, just come here. I can't drive. I've already had a few drinks. I'll be there in the morning. You can ask someone to drive you here, or you could hail a cab. Does it really matter if I come today or tomorrow? It's not like it matters to him anymore. Fine. Do as you wish. Your stuff is packed and laid out on the front lawn. Come pick them up as soon as possible. I don't want them ruining my view. What are you talking about? Are you really not going to come to the hospital? I think I've made myself clear. You're the one who has to come here and take your stuff away. You should be grateful I didn't just break them up and dump them somewhere. You've got to be kidding me. What gives you the right? Oh, you haven't heard the news? Our dear father has left the house to me. Don't worry, you still got a few thousand dollars to cover your rent for a month or two before you get a job. That can't be true. Why would he do that to me? He always said we'd live here together. Well, I guess he lied to you. He was really good at doing that. Besides, is this really that unexpected? I mean, it's obvious that the son gets to keep the house. You'll get married and move in with your husband eventually and I'll build my future here. Get married? What are you even talking about? I'm only 18. I haven't even started college yet. How am I supposed to find a job that pays enough? What should I do about my tuition? Well, maybe you should have spent more time accumulating work experience and less time freeloading. Anyway, you can probably get a student loan. You'll figure something out. I can't believe this. I want to see the will myself. I went over it yesterday. Trust me, I know what they're supposed to look like. I am in law school, remember? So what? You're still just a student. What if it's missing a part or something? If I show you the will, will you agree to leave immediately? But I have nowhere to go. Can't I stay in the house at least until I found a job or moved into the campus housing? I don't think so. You'd have someone to turn to by now if you hadn't been such an antisocial outcast. The fact is, you've already spent more than enough time at a house that never belonged to you. I have just as much of a right to that house as you do. I am his daughter. You're a charity case. That's what you are. He felt bad for you and took you under his wing, but now father's gone and I have no intention of keeping this going. I suppose he must have started regretting his decision to bring you into this house, hence why he barely left you anything. You're so cruel. Why would you ever say something like this to your little sister? How many times are you going to make me repeat this? You are not my sister. We don't have the same blood. We don't have the same DNA. You might as well be a complete stranger. And if you keep irritating me, I'll just go ahead and toss your belongings into the nearest dumpster. 
No, please don't. I'll come and collect them. There you go. Finally, you figured out who's in charge here. Nanny, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I don't know who else I can turn to. Penelope? What happened? Is everything all right? How's your father doing? Has he recovered? Dad, he passed away last night. Oh, I am so sorry to hear that. He was a good man. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know, okay? That's actually why I'm texting you. Simon kicked me out of the house. I have nowhere to go. Could I please stay at your place for a month or two before I move into my dorm? He did what? Penelope, you can stay at my place, but he has no right to treat you that way. But he said Dad left the house to him. He read the will. And if I don't move out by the end of the day, he's going to throw my things away. That can't be legal. I'll call the police and we can go there together if you'd like. What's the point? If the house really is his property, he's going to kick me out sooner or later anyway. I'll just start looking for a job. Maybe he's right about me being a freeloader. Penelope, don't say that. You've been studying hard, you've been doing all kinds of different after-school activities, and you've been volunteering a lot. Don't let your brother make you feel bad about living life your way. But he isn't even my real brother, right? That's what he's always said. Has Simon been saying that a lot? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I know I no longer work there, but I've still spent years raising the two of you. I've come to care for you like my own children. Did your father know about this? I mentioned it once, years ago, but he just ignored it. He said I should be nice to my brother since he was still grieving his mother's death. I know your father always worried about the impact his mother's death had had on Simon. But still, he wouldn't have left almost all of his fortune to him. He loved you too much to do this to you. But what can I do about it now? Simon has the will. We need to get a hold of his will. Get a hold of it as in steal it? Why? Yes. We'll take it to a trusted attorney and check its validity. Do you think he'd go that far to ruin my life? I know he's always considered me an outsider, but we still grew up together. There's no way to tell for sure until we've got proper evidence. Is there a way you could convince him to give you the will? He said he'd show it to me if I agreed to move out immediately, but he never said a word about letting me keep it. Hmm, then we'll have to take it in secret. Do you know when he'll be out of the house for at least a few hours? Well, he'll be out of the house for the funeral. I don't think he's going to miss it. He always cared a lot about the way our family members perceived him. I bet he's been bad-mouthing me to them for years. No wonder they all despise me. I'm sure they don't despise you, Penelope. They're just cold and distant by nature. It's not because of anything you've ever done. Thank you for your kind words, Nanny. And thank you for being someone I could always rely on. Of course, I'll always have your back. Since you'll also have to be at your father's funeral, I'll be the one to sneak into his study and look for the will. But won't that be dangerous? What if the security catches you? Let's go and retrieve your belongings together. We can leave something small, like a ring or an earring, behind and stash it someplace the security cameras can't see. Maybe into a bush or under the porch. On the day of the funeral, I'll return to the house and tell the security you've sent me to retrieve a precious possession of yours. I'll get them to let me into the house and start looking for the will. I'll come out of the house with the missing item in hand and thank them. I guess that could work, but what if the will is real? How will we return it? If the will is authentic, I'll come clean about stealing it and beg him for forgiveness. I don't know. I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation. Penelope, your inheritance is more important than my pride. I promise we'll be able to prove that your father never considered you to be beneath Simon. All right, let's do it. Nanny, did you get into the house safely? I did. I guess since you were so obedient, Simon didn't bother with banning us from entering the house. I'm in your father's study right now. Is Simon still there? Yes, he's talking to our distant cousins. He looks really sad. I wonder if that's also an act. He's never really been an easy person to read. The will doesn't seem to be in his desk drawers. Do you think he could have kept it in the safe? It's worth checking. I just hope he hasn't changed the combination. I'll give it a try. It won't open. He must have changed it. Well, Simon's never been all that creative when it comes to digit-only codes. He uses the same three dates for everything. Maybe you could enter those? The first one's the date of his birth, the second one's the date of his mother's death, and the third one's the date he got admitted to law school. Give me a second. It worked. It was the date of Laura's death. Now I'm starting to feel guilty. Please don't. Laura was a kind-hearted woman. She wouldn't have wanted you to suffer his injustice. Okay, I found the will. I'm going straight to the attorney's office. Great, keep me updated. Penny, I've spoken with the lawyer. He said the will is most likely forged. 
It's going to take some time to prove, but he is certain at least one of the witness signatures has been forged. He says we have a strong case on our hands. Really? That's amazing! But I still don't get it. Why would he do this? Going as far as to commit an actual felony just to make me miserable? What have I ever done to him? I've been treating him like an actual brother. I might have an answer to that. What is it? You have to promise you won't hate me. Why would I hate you? You've been nothing but kind to me my whole life. Nanny, what's going on? The truth is, Simon hates you because you are his half-sister. Mr. Humphrey was your biological father. I would have told you sooner, but I promised him I wouldn't reveal the truth to you until his death. And when I heard about his will, I thought it'd be better if you didn't find out after all. But now that we know the will was likely forged, I can finally get the secret off my chest. What are you saying? How is that possible? I've been told all my life that I was adopted as a baby. Has everyone been lying to me? I am sorry. I, I know it's a lot to take in on your father's funeral, too. We can talk about it another time if you'd like. No, please tell me the whole truth now. I, I can handle it. If you insist. You were the result of an affair. Your parents had a rough marriage. Your mother had been weakened by her illness in most days. She barely had any energy to get out of bed. And your father, he fell for someone else. They had a brief affair and he was planning on breaking things off with Laura. But the mistress begged your father not to divorce his wife since she felt bad for her and knew Simon loved her more than anything in the world. Things seemed to have calmed down for a bit, but then your father discovered the mistress had given birth to a child. He decided to bring the little girl over to his house. And my biological mother let go of me? Just like that? Why? She wanted you to have everything you ever desired. She had no money, she lived in a rundown studio apartment and could hardly afford to pay for your food. It was painful for her to let you go, but she had no other choice. How do you know about all that? Did you know her? Yes, you could say that. Anyway, as you may have guessed, Laura was outraged when she first heard about your existence, but in the end gave in to her husband's wishes. They decided to adopt you legally in order to not ruin their reputation. Eventually, Laura found out the identity of your biological mother. She was so distressed, her blood pressure spiked and she suffered a fatal stroke. I never imagined Simon would find out about any of this, but perhaps he did. Perhaps that's why he resents you so much. I can't believe what I'm reading. I can't believe Dad was this horrible to his sick wife and small child. And who was my biological mother? You said you knew her, so just tell me her name. She worked at your house years before you were born, and a few years after that. Penelope, please try to understand your father's situation. He wasn't a bad man, he made a mistake. Faith, why are you protecting him? And what do you mean she worked at our house years after I was born? Please don't tell me my suspicions are correct. Say it with somebody else. Give me a different name, please. I am so sorry, Penny. Don't call me that. Don't talk to me. I can't believe I lived in complete oblivion all these years. If I were Simon, I'd hate myself too. Please don't say that. I'll start packing my things as soon as I get home. I'll stay at a hotel or some shelter. I don't know. I can't stand to live with you any longer. But once we find the authentic will, you'll be able to go back home. Just wait a bit longer. It's not my home. It was never my home. I understand you're angry, but let's not make any rushed decisions. We can discuss this once you've calmed down. Okay, I'll think about it some more, but this doesn't mean I'll ever forgive you. I know. Simon, I know the truth. I know you forged Dad's will, and I know why you did it. I don't know what you're talking about. You can't accuse people with no proof. I have the will. It's only a matter of time before the truth comes to light. Disclose the real will and I won't press charges. Are you threatening me? If you're convicted, you're going to be kicked out of law school. Are you willing to take that risk? You've worked so hard for that spot. The only reason I'm giving you a chance to come clean is that I feel bad for what happened to your mother. I can see why you hated dad and I can see why you hated me. But you are not a kid anymore. You should be able to see that I had nothing to do with this whole mess. How did you find out? Faith told me. How did you find out? I overheard mom and dad fighting, and in a few days she passed away. You're telling me not to blame you, but if it hadn't been for you and your mother, she'd have still been alive, and they'd have still been happily married. If it hadn't been my biological mother, it'd have been some other woman. I am mad at them too, but it's been 18 years since the affair. Dad was buried this morning, and your mother... She's gone too. Can't we be adults about this? 
Penelope, I'll never be able to bring myself to look at you without being reminded of my mother's pain. I'll hand the real will to our attorney. We can sell the house and split the money, and after that, let's stay out of each other's lives for good. All right, that's fine by me. Simon kept his word. I don't know whether it was because he felt guilty or scared that he'd get kicked out of his school, but he ended up revealing the real will that he had kept hidden away in his room. As per our deal, I didn't press any charges. I'm unsure if it was the right thing to do, but I felt like I'd forever be haunted by the past if I'd ruined my half-brother's life. This way, we can at least part peacefully and go on with our lives. I lived with Faith for a month, and after that I moved into my college dorm. I still haven't forgiven her, but I couldn't bring myself to hate her after all the time she had stood by my side, trying to do her best to make sure I was happy. I've recently started working part-time at a small cafe on campus. Even though I've received my inheritance, I still want to be self-sufficient. I've decided not to think too much about the past and focus on the present. 